So looking at how to find the derivatives when you got e's, right? Now later on we'll do what happens when it's not an e and it's a different number, but that's for a later discussion on a later day. Today we're dealing with what happens when we're taking the derivative and it's an exponential e. All right. So the rule that you got to know, the rule that you got to know, there are basically two things you need to know. So keep this in mind. We'll label it rule. All right. First of all, the derivative of e raised to the x. So the derivative of this is simply e raised to the x. All right. So that thing, I think for most people, they can memorize that, right? I mean, maybe you don't understand it, but you're like, look, if you say so, and that's going to get me credit on the test, I'm all in. All right? But where this, where this rule starts to run afoul is this. What happens when this is not so straightforward? What happens when instead of having e to the x, we have e to some function of x? Then what do I do? Okay, now I'm all, I'm all kinds of flustered. Well, it, you, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. All you have to do, and it's very straightforward, is basically you have two parts. Okay, we're going to call that part one and part two. And part two is always the same shit. Stuff. Parents, I'm sorry. It's always the same stuff. The second part will always just be whatever the heck this was. All you got to do is write that down again. Does that make sense? Like, I don't care what this is. That will always be the second part. So just throw that on the end. So really, you just got to get the first part. And what's the first part? The first part is simply the derivative of whatever this piece is. Does that make sense? The first part is simply the derivative of whatever this piece is. This is the chain rule. This is the chain rule in all of its glory. All right. So as we look at this, what's, the, what's this answer? This answer will be what? We got two parts, right? Well, we know that the second part I mean, just copy and paste that sucker. Look. Bam. I got half of it. Yeah, I mean, look, we gave partial credit. You get something for that. All right. What's the derivative of this piece? And now you got it. The answer is not two equal signs. I swear I try not to cuss, and every time I do, it just goes bad. Okay? That's the answer. 8e e to the 8x. Very straightforward. What's the answer for this one? Again, it's going to be two parts, right? It's going to be two parts, and this second part, just copy and paste. Halfway. I'm halfway home right there. Now, what goes in the middle? 14x minus 4. Now, the question that will come up by a lot of people is, oh, well, do I have to have the parentheses there? Yes, because if you don't have the parentheses without these parentheses here, then what happens? It's just the 4 being multiplied by the e, and there's no distributive property there. Does that make sense? So we've got to put this in parentheses, okay? Now, again, here we go. Oh. Here we go. All right. We got a first part, and then we got the second part. What's the second part going to be? Copy and paste, baby. All right. Now, what's the first part going to be? And this is the one that will really get you. It's going to be 7 over 2 square root 
7x plus 5. Does everybody see that? Because this is the chain rule inside the chain rule. Right? Because the derivative of the square root is 1 over 2 square roots. Right? Because that was a different rule. Right? So that was a, a long ago rule. Right? The long ago rule was this. Okay, the long ago rule said this. If we got to take the derivative of the square root, and it was only for the square root, right? It didn't work if it was something other than the square root. Cube roots didn't work. But the long ago rule was the derivative of the square root was the derivative of that, that inside piece on top to, and then copy and paste that sucker. You feel me? I mean, that's basically what we did there, too. All right. That was, that was, that was from back in, you know, that was back when gas was like 85 cents or something. I mean, that was long ago. Okay. All right. So any questions on that? All right. We're going to pause the video, and I'm going to give you some more problems to practice. We're going to take this next level. We're going to take this next level. All right, well, let's take a look. So we're finding the derivative of this. Now, remember, recall that the derivative of a square root is 1 over 2 square root, whatever that was, and then the derivative of the top, or the derivative of the functions on top. So when you have a problem like this, um, it suffices to do simply on the bottom 2 and then put this down there. Right? But now on the top, you got to put the derivative of whatever this piece is. So what's the derivative of this piece? Well, it's going to be 3 e to the 3x, right? Plus 5 e to the 5x. What did y'all put? Right. All right. Now, what you'll notice is uh, there's no copy and pasting on the end here, right? There's no putting the original function or anything else. The, re the, the copy and pasted actually occurred when you did e to the 3x. That piece was copy and pasted there. The derivative was in front. When you did the derivative of e to the 5x, that piece was copied here, and then the derivative went in front. Does that make sense? Now, as we move on, now we start looking at how we take the derivative of this piece. This is actually the product rule, which I think most of you knew. Most of you knew that this was, in fact, the product rule. So what's the product rule tell us? The product rule says if we have f of x times g of x, that what we have here is it is the derivative of f of x times g of x plus the derivative of g of x times f of x, right? That's what the product rule tells us. So for here, we have two pieces. The derivative of the first piece, which will be 2x times whatever the second piece is. So we copy and paste that, right? Plus the derivative of the second piece times the first. So it's 6 oh, jerk. 6 e to the 6x minus 1 times x squared, yes? Do we agree? Now, for those of you that are very keen on factoring, I know how much you love factoring, I can write this as, I can pull the e to the 6x minus 1 out and write that times uh, x squared plus, uh, or 
or times 2x, 2x plus 6x squared. Do we agree? Yeah. Meaning this, let's uh, format character, let's call this blue. Can you guys see it okay if it's blue? Meaning this and this are the same, so I can just simply factor that out. Okay. Now, if you're so inclined, you could also factor out a 2x as well and make that a final answer of 2x. this piece right times what would be 1 plus 3x does that make sense this would be your final answer if you factored now, the question that you probably will have is, you know, okay, well, do I have to factor on a test? Well, you know, probably not. I mean, I would let you get by with this probably. I mean, I might not be very happy about it. But the problem that most people have is most people can get to here. It's getting to here that really runs them to a, to a buzzsaw. You know what I mean? It's just for whatever reason, when you get to that factoring and all that algebra manipulation is when it really starts getting crazy. All right? So, looking at your answer, I see 2x e to the 6x minus 1 plus 6 e to the 6x minus 1 x squared. I see this as your answer, so we'll go ahead and give you credit for that. Now, let me pause right now and have a discussion with people who are in front of me. Oh, buddy, let's have some fun. It is. This is the quotient rule. Let me remind you what the quotient rule says. The quotient rule says if we have f of x over g of x, It is f prime of x times g of x minus g prime of x times f of x all over g of x squared. Do we all remember that? So, it is the derivative of the top piece. So, what's the derivative of the top piece? The derivative of this piece is 4 e to the 4x. Do we agree? The derivative of the bottom piece is what? Two. e to the 2x. There is no plus 3, which leads me to a final answer. The derivative of the top piece so what we have is the derivative of the top, right, this piece, times the second. times this piece All right minus the rid of this piece times this piece
over what the freaking heck I don't know. I don't know what happened here. I'm getting really, 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 really pissed off, but I can tell you that. Because I don't know what happened to this stupid thing. all over the bottom piece square Which is equal to Oh, we have always simplified it. Check your test two and you simplified it. Which is equal to four We'll just start here. When I multiply this out, what do I get? 4e to the 6x When we multiply this out, we get 4e to the e to the 4x, e to the 2x is e to the 6x plus 3 times 4e to the 4x is 12e to the 4x minus 2e to the 6x and you would be expected to combine these together into one glorious answer which would look like which would look like this 2e to the 6x plus 12e to the 4x over e to the 2x plus 3 and then you square that. Now, just for the record, these you have to distribute because ultimately you can combine like terms. Those, if you distribute, you don't combine like terms at all. Do you see the difference? Yeah. So it would have been no different. Like if I would have given you 8x plus 2 over 3x plus 5, you wouldn't just say 8 times... 3x plus 5 minus 3 times 8x plus 2. Like, you realize you got to distribute that and get an answer, right? Like, you did on the last test, right? Now, all of a sudden, because it's ease, you're like, no, nah, I ain't distributing nothing. <laughs> no, you still got to distribute. And that's why I felt so guilty. And I try to offer you an out, but... Clearly, you didn't want to take it. So, with that being said, unbelievably, we're out of time. So, uh, we, will, <laughs> we will try to do better next time. Until then, take care of yourself and each other.